This is a story of sorts, the podcast mostly about bookish stuff. Hello everyone, Karina here again. I'm so happy to bring you another season of a story of sorts. This will be a bit different from season one. Every other week, I will chat with authors, with book lovers like me, and with entrepreneurs. On top of this, my Patreon account will have free bonus episodes where I talk about the books I've read each month, and really, whatever crosses my mind that I find worthy of sharing. So don't forget to follow me there for updates. You can find all of my social media, including the link to my Patreon, on linktree slash Karina Pereira. On this first episode, I talk with Irenea Vicari. Irenea is a friend and a very talented person. She plays the guitar and banjo and composes her own songs, and she makes beautiful, artful crafts like embroidery, knitting and sewing. Irenea has challenged me for a game of Guess the Plot of the Book by the title, a bookish game which is pretty much described by its name. It's a really funny game to play with friends, and I thought it was the best way to kick off the season. Have a listen. Hi, Irenea. Hey. So, I'm here with Irenea today, and Irenea is my friend, so there might be quite a lot of laughter in this episode and awkward pauses and stuff like that. Lots of those. Yes. So we decided to do a sort of a game. Basically, each of us brought three books that the other hasn't read yet. And with the title, the other one has to guess what the book is about. So I don't know what Irenea's books are and she doesn't know what my books are. I hope. I don't know. I talk so much about books. Maybe I told her, but I don't think so. Possibly. So we're going to start. Do you want to start or should I give you my book or you give me your book? Um, I mean, you're the director, so you choose. <laughs> so what? Mm. Okay, so okay, I'll, st- I'll start by giving you one okay. of my books. I'm not going to show the cover because okay. I don't want you to guess okay. what it is. I'll close on my the eyes. Cover. I'll show this. It's called... Oh. These are quite... Actually, I brought two books that are quite recent. All right. This is one of them. All it's right. called The Hannah Wars. Okay. It was written by Adiba Jagirdar. I always have trouble saying the, the name, but I think mm-hmm, it's right. Mm-hmm. The Hannah Wars. What do you think it's about? Hannah. Uh, Sorry, if I show you like this, you actually see the blurb, so let me... Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Well, um, I think it's a, a book genre for teenagers, probably, based on the color of the book. And the letters. Shouldn't have brought the book with me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And, uh, well, Henna Wars, what could it be about? Hmm. I think it's... The story is set somewhere in the Middle East, maybe. So I, I just have to, like, randomly guess what it's about? Yeah. No wrong answers, because all answers are wrong, probably. All right, all right. So, okay, Hannah. I've never had it done to myself, but I find it a very beautiful art form. Um, But it's the Hannah Wars. Yeah, it's Hannah Wars. What do you think it's about? Maybe it's just these two girls both doing Hannah to other people. And um, maybe they're rivals, and uh, maybe they first started doing it as friends to each other, and then they got so good at it that they kind of gotten into the the top of their own uh, city or neighborhood, and everyone wants their henna done by them, and it just turns out into one big bitchy fight. Yeah, I think it's something like that. Do we do the reveal, like, right after? Yeah, I I think it makes sense. Okay. Okay, so... You're not that far. Okay. Off. So, I don't know, I don't need... Okay, so this is the cover. Mm -hmm. It has, like, two girls Mm -hmm. with hand on their hands. Mm. And the story is about, like... There's this Bengali girl, but she is also Irish, and it's in Ireland. And one of them... So, it's, like, a family tradition. Mm -hmm. It's from our culture. And at school, they have this, for a business class, they have to create a business. And then at the end of the year, uh, the teacher is going to see who has the best business. So the Bengali girl decides to create the henna business, but then 
there's this other girl who's Irish Brazilian who decides to also create the same business. And then they're like, they kind of, you know, they fight each other. But obviously, and if you read the blurb, it's a sort of kind of enemies to lovers. Okay. So like, you know, they, they're not really like, fighting with each other per se, mm -hmm. but they kind of are pursuing the same thing. And it's about also cultural appropriation right. because the girl who is Irish Brazilian, obviously, well, that's not her culture, mm -hmm. but she is making a business with that. You're not that far off. Uh, no. <laughs> not exactly, no. Yeah. Also very trending topic at the moment. I guess. Like cultural appropriation. I can't even pronounce the word, but... Uh... What did cultural appropriation? Oh, <laughs> cultural appropriation. Yes. Yep. Yeah. No, it is, but it's um, it's nice because yeah, the 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 writer is also Irish Bengali, so uh, yeah. I like uh, that it's uh, creating awareness about it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and subject. There's a cat in the yes, room. Yes, Debbie has decided has to join us. Has Debbie uh, ever been us. on the podcast? E, that's Debbie. She's saying something now. That means yes, because she has been, I think, one time. Actually, one time there, we, me and Yuris are talking about it on a, a blooper at the end of the episode. We're talking about Debbie. Right, Debbie? Yeah. Yeah, why are you so upset? You have food and water. Just wants attention. Food and water is not no. what is life. No. Like, but, attention is life. Yes. <laughs> But yeah, you were not that far off. Yay! So the author is also yeah, Bangladeshi and Irish writer. She's a book writer contributor actually. But the story is set in Ireland. Ireland. Oh okay. yeah. And it's curious because like the in the middle of the story there are some Portuguese because hmm. the, the Brazilian girl is talking to her mother, so it's yeah. quite interesting to see. And uh, it's a really nice story. It's very well written. And you will write also about being young adult. Like, right. not really exactly just for teenagers, but okay. uh, it's young adults. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Debbie's still <laughs> looking for attention. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind giving it to her. No. Never. Okay. So I guess... Is it my turn now? Yeah. Okay. Uh... Oh, boy. Yeah. This one. Wow. That's a romance. Do you want to say the name of the book? Yes, so the, the, uh, the book I chose, or one of the books, is called Concept M, by a Dutch writer called Afko Romein. Is it in Dutch? This book is in Dutch, yes. Hmm. Co is it concept the same thing in Dutch as in English as it is in Dutch, right? Uh, yeah. Just a concept. Mm -hmm. Concept M. Is he a man, the writer, or woman? I thought you had to guess. Or... Do I? Because oh. I, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if... I always have this trouble with Dutch okay, names. Okay, it's a woman. Oh, there you go, because I thought it was a man. Because okay. I always have this trouble with Dutch books, cause okay. names. Because mm -hmm. sometimes the same name is okay for both women and men, and non-binary. <laughs> but uh, I never know that kind of... I, I just figured it was a man, but I, I, don't, I didn't know. I didn't know that name. Concept M. It could be about menstruation. Okay. The M is there. Oh no, but you don't say menstruation in Dutch. And the, the yes, book we is do. There. You do? Mistra oh yeah, you see, you say though. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Um, it could be about men. Okay. Is it? Oh, it's a romance, so it's it's fiction. Yeah. Concept M. Maybe. Concept M. Maybe she wants. It's the story where the main character forgets that the word M exists. Sorry, the letter. Okay. So they go after other people. No, I'm just messing it up. I don't know. <laughs> well, you have to guess. I know I have to guess. There's no right or wrong. That's true. I mean, there is That's definitely wrong, said. but... Uh... <laughs> Concept M. I kind of have the feeling that this is something like a search for something. Someone is going on search for something. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to think that the writer wrote a whole book around men, even though it's possible. Mm -hmm. Is it that? Did she write a book about, like, men, about a, a woman going into the world and kind of figuring men out? I think that's what it is about. Yeah. Or maybe is that your it's... Final no. Conclusion? I think, actually, no. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, that's because I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I can get anything from this. <laughs> I guess it is. Maybe she. This is a story about a girl who's trying to figure out herself and men around her. And yeah, that I'm, I'm just gonna go for it because I have no idea. So you can explain. But <laughs> yeah, I feel a bit. Uh, I feel a bit bad because I've chosen a. a title that is so abstract it could that, be basically anything but that was the point actually i was looking for, on bookshelves okay. for abstract that like the hardest oh. the, the better uh, okay so i actually i i think i did a good job then. yeah so i now tell you what it's about yeah all right <clears throat> uh this uh it's a a really uh interesting book it's fictional uh it's kind of science fictional uh, it sets uh, the, uh, the book is from 2018, I think. Yeah, and uh, it sets in 2020. And, uh, the story is about a uh, society in the Netherlands where there is a certain group of people that have uh, that suffer from a disease Ooh. called Kleurloos Height, which means uh, it's like a physical or yeah. And, like, um, they don't see color, as in, like, they are... Well, no. Mm, they can see color, but their skin is very gray. And their oh. their health is very... They don't have good health. Okay. They get tired very quick. Um, is, it a, is it in some way about depression? No. Okay. No. Sorry. <laughs> I thought it was some kind of, like, metaphor. No. Uh... And Concept M is actually the name of the medicine that these people have to take to keep living. Because if they don't take the medicine, then they die. Quickly. Yeah. Okay. Um, and in the book, it follows a girl. And this girl, she also suffers from Clerlo's height. And uh, she starts wondering. She's kind of, she's like a, actually she's like a rebel. And she she wonders if if this medicine really helps the people or only brings a lot of financial trouble into people's lives because it's a very very expensive medicine and uh, it, it it actually afflicts uh, the in, the whole of the Netherlands and even across the 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 border bo- the border yeah. Um, Are they going to Belgium? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but like, okay, but do, do, but if they don't take the medicine, they do die. That that's what the book is about. Yeah. I don't uh, know sp- oh I yeah, of course, of course. It. Yeah, but it's very interesting because um, very up to date though with the conspiracy yeah. theories and yeah. stuff like that. Ah. Yeah, I think it's funny because it was written two years ago and it sets place in this current year and well. We've had a pretty crazy year so far. Yeah. Also, <laughs> with a lookout for a, for a potential medicine that might cure us, but we don't know. So I think it's a interesting, pretty relevant book that she probably didn't even knew that by the time she was writing it. Yes. Wow. Nice. <laughs> Very well. So it's a bit like dystopian as well. It's like it, it's science fiction, but a bit like the. Handmaid's Tale and yeah, Hunger exactly. Games and stuff. Mm, nice. Oh well. Is there an English uh, edition you know? I don't know. I should check it out. That's a good thing to uh, look up. Okay. And otherwise it's a, a great way to... Uh... Maybe I should try it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't know how, how difficult it is, but I'll take a look at it. So next one. I'm going to leave this one for last. This one for last. Okay. So this one is called... And I've just finished it, and it was really good. Okay. And it's called The Vanishing Half by Brit Bennett. I'm showing you the blurb again as you All right. Know, cause... Vanishing Half. Vanishing Half. Just covering there. It doesn't say anything on the cover, but just in case. Yeah. I'm just gonna base my, my opinion, my theory, on the fact that you've been reading a lot of teen, how do you call those books? Young adult. Young adult yeah. books lately. Maybe something it has to do with a uh, little bit of mystery in there. Vanishing half. Maybe she's like half ghost, half human. 
I'm just gonna guess that it book is uh, the main character is a girl. Okay. Yeah, girl, and um, she is uh, in her twenties, and she suddenly discovers that she's slowly starting to forget things. Maybe she has like early dementia. I guess this sometimes happens to young people as well. Fortunately. And she is kind of struggling with the fact that she's about to lose all of her memory. But maybe it only stops halfway. That she only remembers half of her life. And that the book stops at the, the part where, uh, where she's accepting the situation. You know, it's not what the book is about. But I'm pretty certain a lot of people are going to get great ideas to write from. <laughs> From your from what you think they are, because that's a great <laughs> idea. Like someone losing like half of, of her memory, and like that's that's a great idea for a book. Okay. So if anyone wants to pick up, that might already exist. Maybe you can write it yourself. I mean, lots of ideas exist and are rewritten. Well, enlighten me. What is it about? Really, <laughs> so, <laughs> it is about. <laughs> it is not young adult, although it could be. Re- I think it could be read by young adults, mm. like late teens, early 20s and up. This is quite recent and this is about race. There are two twin sisters who were born in a city called Mallard. I know all this because I just read it because I had read it three months ago and have known like half of it already. Mm. But they were born in a a city um, with only black people but they are very light black people. Mm. And they hate dark black people. Like, and it's in the 60s. So the whole country is just, um, just you know, everything. If you're black, you there are certain things, certain jobs, etc. that you're just not allowed to do. So your life is a lot harder. Mm-hmm. Which is still true, but like back then even worse. Um, and it's in the States. So these two twin sisters, when they turn 16... They decide to leave the small town where, where to, to live the small town where they used to live, and go to New Orleans. I if I remember correctly, and then at some point, one of them keeps living, uh, ju- just disappears. One of them just keeps living like as she is, like uh, um, gets a job, etc., gets married, gets a child, but the other one, before all that happens, disappears, and she goes on to live as a white woman. Because she was, like, white passing. And then, basically, you have the story of the twin sisters. One of them doesn't know where the other sister is. And the other sister is basically living her whole life, pretending her past didn't exist, pretending that she is white to be accepted and to take the privileges of being white. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to tell anything else, of course, because I don't want to spoil it. But it's really good. Like, the writing is really good as well. Just reads very quickly. But the story is, is because, like you said, there is also a bit of a mystery there and a bit of um, like suspense and uh-huh. stuff. It's not a thriller, but it's really good. So yeah, you were not, I mean, you were was, far off, but... Yeah, very far off. But good <laughs> far off, like it was a really good uh, idea for a book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. This one um, is by Margaret Atwood. Oh. It's called The Heart Goes Last. The heart goes last. Yeah. I only read the, the Handmaid's Tale and half of the Testaments. I didn't even finish the Testaments yet oh. from her. So, the heart goes last. I kind of wonder, because I don't think she she only writes dystopian books, but or kind of science fiction books, but I do think she always writes about kind of situations that could be political. Mm-hmm. about women's rights or, or social... I think she always writes kind of socially, sto- social stories. Even r- if she writes romance, I don't know if that's romance, but even if she does, I think she kind of always talks about uh, social situations. Right. The heart goes last. I see a teddy bear there. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be seeing the cover. <laughs> uh, but I... It, this is the story about a family. And... The heart goes last. Is it because someone is like... And in that family, there's someone who is brain dead already. But their heart is still beating. So they're technically still alive. 
And then the family has to decide. Maybe it's a child. And then the family has to decide when to let go of that child. And if they, like, if they want to give the organs to other people, like to donate to other people. But then that would mean that they would have to, you know, plug in the machine and make that decision. Uh, which is very hard to make, of course. Especially if, I mean, if it's a child and... Uh, I don't know. I just think maybe it's that. <laughs> No idea. Hmm. <laughs> no. Interesting guess, but no. <laughs> <laughs> it is actually what you said at the beginning. It it, it, is. it is dystopian. Yeah. Dystopian. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So it also probably like a lot of our books. It's uh, it it takes place in a in an alternative world society. Um, here in this book. The world is a pretty big mess. It, I think it sets... Is that in 2020? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the story is in, in is set in, uh, in the States. And um, there's this nationwide economic collapse. And people are losing jobs. People are even selling their baby's blood to get extra money. And the story follows two people. A couple one of them also loses their job and they have to live in their car and uh, at one point they uh, come across this ad about a secluded oh uh, uh, it's not company but it's um sorry uh, I love blah 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 <laughs> what's the name a secluded um oh what do you call when it's people like a gated leave... community yes a, com- a secluded community yeah That's sort of and yeah. uh okay. Seems like paradise because uh, you can live there, you can work, you get a roof over your head, all of that, and then and they they go for it. And um, what's the, the catch? The catch is half of the time they are there, they have to spend in prison, and half of the time they have to they have to serve as some type of guards. So they're kind of leading a double life, and the house that they live in there is not entirely theirs because the time they are spending in jail, some other family is living in their house. But they don't know anything about this family. Oh. Yeah. And then once the story goes on, they get very obsessed with this other family living in their house. And it kind of... Oh, yeah. This is like one of the parts that makes the story so uh, so intriguing and interesting. But there's also like uh, interesting dilemmas. Yeah. Is that an English yeah. word? more like moral yeah things that go on and they have to decide what to do the, the kind of jobs they have to do at the prison oh uh, so it's very interesting okay yeah Wait, well maybe it's a i haven't finished the testaments yet but maybe the one the, is the a... teddy bear uh, at first when i saw the cover i thought that's a really ugly cover <laughs> why would you put that teddy bear on in the, the middle cover? right yeah but it it, um, it has something to do with the story. Story. Oh, okay. So yeah. Alrighty. So, I see. It's not totally random. All right. Yeah, because <laughs> I saw that, and it, I don't know. I see the houses in the cover, and then the teddy bear, and it kind of makes you think, yeah, of a family someone left behind, especially a child mm-hmm. or so. So, uh, alrighty. Yeah. Completely off. Some weird plot twists in the end. That's good though. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I need to take note of that because. <laughs> Things gonna be interesting. And it's in English. The heart goes last. <laughs> Very well. And now it's the last book that I brought. I hope you don't know the plot to this one. I don't think you do, but I just chose it because it's such it's a long title and I used to always mix it up. Okay. And we never finish the title when we say it. We just say drive your blah blah blah. blah. Alright. Okay. And it's Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead. Okay. And it's written by Olga Tokarczuk and yeah, it was it. She won a Nobel Prize, and I read this actually for for a book club. Mm-hmm. And I always used to mess up like the title. Never heard of it before. No. Okay. No. So it's a uh, drive your plow over the bones of the dead. Okay. That's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm having images in my head. Not so pleasant. <laughs> does it? Does this book? Just a question. Does like the the title of this book give you any seasonal thoughts? Like, if you think this book belongs somewhere, where do you think it would belong in a, in a, a season, like autumn or 
winter or spring or summer. I'd say around Halloween, so autumn. Okay. <laughs> Just to, sorry, because I have this feeling that books give me season feelings. Really? Yeah, like okay. I read some books and, and then I think, oh, this is, to-. even sometimes it's like, it takes place in the summer, but for some reason it just gives me no. winter season. Okay, feelings. then in that case, it gives me an autumn seasoning. Okay, good. Yeah. Just to check. <laughs> um, Drive or blow over the bones of the dead. I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's literal. There's got to be some... You know, um, Bildsprache. How do you say that in English? Like a metaphor? Is that a yeah. metaphor? Like a metaphor. I think it's a very metaphorical book. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe it um, is. Driver <laughs> Blow Over the Bones of the Dead. It's a very simple book cover. It does not... Oh, yeah, but it has other... I just brought... I'm, like, this is the cover that I have, but mm-hmm. it has other editions that have other things. Yeah. I could show you because I don't think it gives away a lot. No, it's okay. I'm but... gonna, I'm gonna just guess yeah. randomly guess. Yeah. Fictional. Yes. The writer is Polish. I don't know if it helps, but just in case. <laughs> Maybe it's about someone very selfish, egocentric, uh, that wants to reach for the top, and does not mind, you know doing dirty things to get there even if it involves killing other people this person has to get to that point that this person wants to get to he'll do anything and then maybe realizes uh, is it worth all of that in the end and then ending with a question yeah so (laughs) i don't want to spoil the book (laughs) okay but again, you're not super, super far off. Okay. Because this book is a sort of, it's not a thriller, but it is kind of a thriller, except that it's not because it doesn't really read as a thriller. Mm. But basically, the main character is this lady, this old lady. Mm. And she, actually, one of the things that you notice throughout the whole book is that we were just talking about it, but she is crazy about astrology. But she actually believes it. Like, she she honestly believes that she knows her future, that she knows exactly when she's going to die through the stars, through astrology. So, okay. you know, all the things we were joking about, oh, you're, you're a cancer, you're like Sagittarius, etc. Except that she actually believes it's true. And she, she, even small things from day to day, she says everything is written in the star. Every single day. That's happening, it's written in the stars. So anything can be guessed. Because it's not a guess. Because it's just written. Mm -hmm. But that's like a big part of the book. But um, not a big part of the book. It's just a part of who she is. It doesn't take a long long time in in the book. But it's a part of who she is. And she's very worried about nature. And she lives all by herself in like this town where usually people... Um, basically, the place where she lives, the part of the town where she lives, usually people come in, come in for a vacation. So during the winter, she takes care of the houses of her neighbors. They pay a fee and she takes care, makes sure that everything is in place. And then in the summer, they come back. And this is in Poland, but very close to the border with the um, Czech Republic. Like really at the border, basically. And then murders start happening. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> exactly and everyone is investigating everyone is is and alongside the murders like she starts to really believe that the murders are committed by animals because people are doing stuff to harm nature and to harm animals and she basically she really deeply believes animals are taking revenge mm. on all the shit they've been been dealing with because yeah. you've been hunting them as well and there are a lot of clues that point to the animals doing it Mm -hmm. so basically the whole book is the police and herself and and there's like someone a stud a student that comes uh, to her place um, also often um, and is translating some poetry and stuff and she's helping so they're all kind of trying to figure out what it is Mm. what's happening who's doing all the killings and it does have a sort of a an open ending in a sense so you you do know what happens but not everything 
But it's very, it's kind of curious because I talked about this before, also on the podcast and at the book club, that it's one of those books that I, re- I was really bored when I was reading it. I was like, oh, okay, so where, like, not really bored. It was just like, where is this going? Just, you know, carry on, carry on. But then I finished the book and I was like, wow, this book is so good. Like, it's really so good. It's one of the best books I've read, even though I, I don't think I would read it again. But I would recommend it. And I, I never read a book. Never. Maybe I will, but it's, yeah, it's just a very weird book because I, I, I didn't find it super interesting as I was reading it, but then as I finished, like, wow, <laughs> and I actually guessed it's pretty much the ending, like, eight, I think I took a note because at the time I was taking notes, like, 86 pages through. And the book is how many pages? 260 something. Okay. But I like to do that. I like to try and guess. Because mm. with the, like Agatha Christie and stuff like that, I usually never guess. Because, like, oh, it's this one. Oh, no, it's that one. And then it's that one. It's never the one I said. But this one it is. Just wanted to brag about it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Well, it's like you weren't that far off. I mean, there were a few elements that you got I right, actually. Yeah, no, you're not. Yeah. No, you're not. Come on. I, was I mean, far again, off. I don't want to <laughs> give any spoilers. <laughs> but you're not that far off. Oh, okay. About like the selfishness and no mean like no like doing anything just to get what they want without thinking about other people. That's very that was very mm. on. <laughs> so. And this is the last one. Last one. It's called La Superba. Oh my god! Wait a second. Sorry. That's from the same one that wrote the um, hotel yeah. big hotel. I want to say California, but that's the song. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name? Big Hotel? The, uh, Grand Hotel Europa. Yeah, Grand Hotel. See, it's not even big. Oh my god, Grand Hotel Europa. Is. Yeah. So the writer is Ilya Leonard Pfeiffer. Yeah. And uh, he wrote this book uh, in 2013. Okay, and it won the Libris Prize in 2014. I do think... I'm not sure, because I may be confusing things. Wouldn't be the first time. But we have like three of our books at the bookstore and one of them and i think it's this one it's in the um, the 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 shelf for theater plays and stuff like that Mm. but maybe it's not this one maybe it's another another la superba okay so this is la superba is like someone who's superb how do you call it in english how do you say it in english superior yeah Mm -hmm. so is this and it's about a woman right Superba, it's feminine. So it's about a woman. So this is about a woman. And I don't know why I can't take my mind off it being in theater. Is it? It's about a woman who's an actress, but a theater actress specifically. But she gets into some serious, like, terrible businesses. Okay. Like dark, behind the scene things because she wants to of course you know be acclaimed and and be like a very be seen as a very good actress and to get fame and and all that but like not just fame for fame just because she really loves the art she really loves theater and she loves the art so she just wants just wants people to recognize her and her 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 love for the art but she finds out some secrets that she shouldn't find out. She ends up with a wrong mob. Mm-hmm. Of the, the, yeah. And she just gets in a spiral of desperation. Crazy. Yeah. Just just lo- starts losing the grip on reality. Okay. That's what I think it happens. And I don't think it ends well or badly. I just think it ends in a... Well, it doesn't end very well. Mm. <laughs> That's what I think it is. I don't know. But again, uh, yeah. <laughs> no idea. What is it about? Ah, uh, well, was actually, I, I'm... Uh... Was I too far off? Completely off? Or... <laughs> um, I'm not sure. Because I'm only halfway through uh, the book. You know what worse is? Like, don't tell anybody. But I should know this. Because the book is at the bookstore. So I should know what it is in there. <laughs> and I probably already read, like, the blurb on the back. All right. Because I sometimes, like, yeah. I pick books to read the back usually yeah. when I don't know them. And I probably just forgot because I, I, yeah. I well, there's forget. there's so many very... books at the bookstore. Yeah, no, I can't. And I'm very bad with memorizing those things yeah. sometimes. Oh, you're forgiving. 
So, yeah, carry on. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm only halfway through the book, uh, but it, it there's a lot of different characters in the book, so maybe one of the characters you were talking about also, I don't know, maybe, maybe they come up later. But um, the story sets place in uh, Genua. Yeah, in Italy. Yeah. Uh, how do you say that in English? I don't know. Ge- Ge- Genova. I don't know. Geneva. Gen- Gen- I don't yeah. know. Genevi. I don't know. You say Genoa in Dutch? Genoa. Yes. Genoa. Yes. Well. Is uh, that Geneva or is that somewhere else? Because I thought... I don't know. It doesn't matter. We'll yeah. check it later. Um, <laughs> in Italy. In Italy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, and the title is actually... It's a, it's how people call uh, Gen- Genoa. Yeah. Oh, really? The yeah. suburb? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they, they talk about this city like it's it's fantastic. It's great. It's suburb. Yeah. Superb, actually. Yeah. And the um, main character in this book is a writer. He actually calls himself Ilya. Oh, and it's a man. Yeah. Uh, he, he calls... He, it's funny because he calls himself, the, he gives himself the name that the writer... But the writer has. is a woman. No, no, no. It's a man. Are you sure? The, yeah, it's this one. Oh my it's god. It's definitely a man. I swear to god, all this time I thought it was a woman. No. <laughs> Terrible. I'm, I'm fired. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so the, the main character, it's it's uh, a fictional character. It's not an autobiography. Yeah. Uh, but he he has given the the character his own name. Self insertion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he uh, he he lives in uh, Genoa. And it's also a writer. Like the main character has his name, and yeah. he's, he's a writer. He's, okay. he's he's there. He wants to write a new book, so he's looking for inspiration. And uh, there's a lot of characters coming along his story. It's very uh, interesting. But the the most interesting. <laughs> interesting part is that it also describes how people from africa go there and try to well they, it's like they they want to go there because they think their life will be so much better than they had in, in africa so okay. there's a lot of immigrants and talking uh, about um, how they try to get a better life but it doesn't really most of the time does not work out at all it's a bit sad sometimes, uh, but yeah, I'm only halfway through the book, yeah. so I haven't read all of it, <laughs> but so far it's very interesting and sort of different aspects of, uh, of this, this, this whole city that come to, come to light. It's actually not that great, as the title may say. Suggest, yeah. Yeah. But maybe it's just great for those who have money and go there on vacation. <laughs> Yeah, it could Some, be. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes a bit like that. Yeah. Especially, if, I think, especially like big cities, when the rent and everything is so expensive. If you live yeah. there, I mean, it's nice because it's a nice city. And especially for artists, you have a lot more opportunities than outside the big cities. But on the other hand, yeah, people are kind of just struggling as well, especially yeah. artists. Yeah. Yeah, lots of struggles. And there's this... This, this these big boats coming in, in there with tourists and they only see like a, a, a tiny part of the city uh, but the touristic they groups. don't really know what all happens outside of this 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 place these places where they only come yeah i think okay. it's interesting all right have you I, ever been to the city no, no. but reading it kind of really makes me happy that i'm <laughs> I don't live there. Okay, but do you think it will still be... Do you think he wrote the book as a way to kind of call attention to it? To the fact that people go there as tourists and they don't really see the truth of the city and that's why they call it the suburb? Superb. No, it's mostly about the immigrants. Yeah, that's okay. that's the main main part. Immigrants that, that come there and try to have a good life. But it, it's, it's, it's really... impossible, basically. To have a good life and yeah, they keep picking the city. Okay, all right, <laughs> and and that's okay. So we were kind of you, you. I was more far off than you. 
in this. But it's I not a competition. Equal. It's not a competition. No, it's not. <laughs> but I do, do like the stories that you created as well with this. So, um, yeah, it was hard for me to pick some books because at the moment I'm only reading books about pregnancy and... Uh, how to have a great labor, but uh, so they're all quite. The titles are quite obvious. Yeah, yeah. I also do. So these are all books that I've I've read a couple of years ago, or. But that's okay. I mean, that the the point was just to bring. I brought these because, again, I also remember the stories better, hmm. but also because I didn't want titles that were very obvious. Hmm. If I like, there are some titles yeah. that if I obviously bring that, you know, it's about or you're more likely to guess. So I wanted something a bit more. Let's see what you get it, you get from it without being too obvious. So it was fun. Yeah, enjoy it. I, I think Me maybe too. I'll probably do this with more people. <laughs> it was <laughs> really really fun. And um, thank you for coming to the podcast. Well, thank you for inviting me in your podcast. You're very welcome. And uh, I'll see everyone in a few weeks. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. You can follow Irenea on Instagram, uh, Speaking Ivy or Stitching Ivy for Arts and Crafts. I will leave all necessary links on the podcast notes. I'll be back in two weeks for another episode, this time an author interview with Eje Gerler to talk about her debut middle grade book, Frank. To get regular updates, don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and Patreon for extra content. All links available on linktree slash Karina Pereira. I'll, re- I'll re-record this part at the end. <laughs> How are you going to see everyone? No, yeah, because I always say... To you. I never say that. I always say, talk to you in a few weeks. I talk to you in two weeks. <laughs> Today I just didn't know, like, it's so weird to do the, the like, goodbye with you here. It's like, I'm talking to the microphone. And she's right there. Leah. Very well.